Data Nigeria TV, where we have news on politics, sports, entertainment, and so much more. Did you know that we also have feature stories where we talk about nothing but everything? It's the Breakfast Show on TSL Nigeria TV. Good morning, Nigeria. It's the Breakfast Show on TSL Nigeria TV, where we have news on politics, sports, entertainment, and so much more. Did you know that we also have feature stories where we talk about nothing but everything? It's the Breakfast Show on TSL Nigeria TV. amazing way to kick off your week is for you to know that it's a clean slate for you to be productive smart and do all that your goals want to achieve i welcome you to another exciting episode of the breakfast show only on tsl nigeria tv as usual i'm not alone my musketeers are here with me as usual looking all beautiful and ready to kick it off my ladies good morning joyce good morning how do you do I'm good. How was your weekend? <laughs> oh, Father's Day was really exciting yesterday. Yeah. Compared to that of last year, this year so was so much bigger. Last year on social media, while we were trying to celebrate our great fathers, put away fathered by you know horrible men, kept complaining the entire time and stuff like that. But this year it was really turned down, okay. and a lot more praise was given to the Nigerian fathers. Some put to social media to share stories about their father. Oh. Two, a couple of them really stuck out for me. One girl was like, she remember when she was still in school and she got raped and she called her dad. Her dad flew in, no questions asked, arrested the person that did it, stayed in Benin because she was in Benin, stayed in Benin for one month to make sure that the case went to court and that it was tried and then he was sentenced. Another girl was like on her wedding day that somebody spilled malt on her gun. So she was really offended and she was frowning the entire time and her dad didn't know what happened. So when her dad saw her frowning, he just came and whispered to her, let's just leave this thing and go home. <laughs> I think basically the ratio at which Mother's Day has been celebrated in the year to Father's Day, it's 10 to 1. And so it is becoming an awareness. Oh, Father's needs to be celebrated. And I think this is the second Father's Day that we are celebrating this year. And so, Legit? Yes. This is the second. The first one? It was sometime in April. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go straight up into the newspaper review. Just what do we have this morning? I have with me the Vanguard for Monday, June 17, 2019. The major story is insecurity. Parents now are afraid to send children to school, UNICEF. We will deal with a marauding headsman, Ara on Nakatan 4 in Kanso. New security policy for Lagos is coming, says Samu. Efforts to convert menace in place, Ekiti government. Buhari and not worth governors working to tackle insurgency. Presidency you can find this story on page five. Moving on to our picture story, there is honor for Elumelu. Uh, from left, a former head of state, General Yakubu Gowon, a chancellor of Bayero University, Kano, BUK, and Amayanabo of Tom Brass, King Alfred Diete Spiff. Also, the founder, the Tony Elumelu Foundation and group chairman, United Bank for Africa, UBA, Tony Elumelu. Um, a pro chancellor and chairman governing council BUK Professor Ibrahim Gambari and a vice chancellor of BUK Professor Muhammad Bello during the conferment of an honorary doctor of business on Elumelu in recognition of his foremost contribution to Africa's economic development through the promotion of entrepreneurship and philanthropy in Kanu on Saturday. Moving on, Nigeria's world's 16th least peaceful country. A report has shown you can find the story on page 8. Bailout funds are structured loans to states. This is coming from the CBN. You can find the story on page 15. And in sports news, Nigeria and France in Big World Cup Tango kick off at 8 p.m. You can find the story in the sports banner for today, Monday, June 17, 2019. Hey, Drew, what do we have on the Guardian this morning? Guardian. And for the top stories, we have controversy intensifies over EU election report. Verdict tears apart ruling opposition parties. I like to review party registration guidelines, guidelines as EU false polls. How Buhari non assents to electoral bill on the mind commission. And then it also says rights to body calls for mammoth resignation. All this on page 6. 
of the Guardian newspaper. And then for the picture story, we have Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa on the right, Deputy Senate President Ove Omo Agege, Vice President Yemi Osibanjo, and others during a church service to mark the Father's Day at the State House Chapel, Abuja, yesterday. And then another one here says police confirms bandits killing of 34 persons in Zamfara. News on page 4. Nigeria must learn from Rwanda. Genocide experience. Gambari warns. News on page 8. And then for the last one, Africa needs 98 million to contain Ebola next month, says WHO. News on page 4. And for sports, we have Nigeria battles, battles hosts in rain for survival. That's the sports. And that's what we have for the Guardian. All right, so bringing down to Edo State, we have the Nigerian Observer. And on the top stories, Obasiki reiterates commitment to make Edo investment destinations. And on the picture story, we have Thanksgiving. Edo State's Governor, Mr. Godwin Obasiki, writes, and the Benin monarch, His Royal Majesty Oba Ewae II, at a special Thanksgiving service held at the Holy Arousa Cathedral, Benin City, to mark the successful completion of the Uge Odudwa and the Uge Vie ceremonies celebrated by the monarch, fourth by charity Ozigbo Seri. And also, Basiki celebrate Thanksgiving with Oba Ewae II. OVN ails. Adult people for standing with Governor Obasekin. For the last story, tax collection, the use of technology protects trader Obaseki says. For this amount, you could go to your newspaper vendors and you get full details of today's story. But before we wrap up the newspaper review, we can't go away without the Mr. and Mrs. We cannot. We cannot. <laughs> All right, so for our Mr. and Mrs. segment of today, we have uh, Mrs. says, by the way, dear, is your friend not going to remarry? And Mr. says, he said he can no longer understand women. When he was married, his wife accused him of cheating on her. His mistress also accused him of the same offense. Why are hey, women cheater. doing this? How are the mistress <laughs> or the wife <laughs> cheater? <laughs> If his wife and his mistress, they are both complaining of the same issue, he's, 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 he's practicing the law of multiplication. Why does a mistress go, 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 go complain of cheating? They are literally enabling cheating. You know where you stand. Does it mean he has another extra girlfriend? Yes. No, it means that yeah, she extra, extra. cannot accept the fact that the extras, extras are too much for her to handle. Reminds me of a movie, Cheat Daddy. <laughs> Uh, uh, we have come to the end of this uh, this uh, um, I beg your pardon this section of the breakfast show. Do well to stay tuned. We're going to short break. When we return, we are going to be discussing a very very sensitive topic: the high rise of betting and gambling. Stick around and see the breakfast show on TSN Nigeria TV. into our history for today. Today's one is actually quite important. I mean, it just goes on to show how far Africa has become. Now, on this day in 1991, now the South African government, the South African parliament in particular, repealed the Population Registration Act, which required racial classification of all South Africans at birth. 
Now, the Population Registration Act was created in 1950 and was a part of the apartheid system and social political rights, education opportunities and economic status were largely determined by the group to which the individual belonged. Now, the three basic racial classifications under the law were black, white and colored. And the criteria used the characteristics of the person's hair, skin color, facial features, home language, and the area where the person lives, including employment, social economic status, and eating and drinking habits. Appetite was finally abolished in 1994. Now, if you read um, Trevor Noah's book, Born a Crime, no you would have yeah. so much in-depth knowledge about what is being discussed. It's not what I really went through a lot. And sometimes I really think about it, that how are you a white person from your own country, come from another person's country, and oppress the person, and place laws? These are things that they were going through at that time. There's so much story. There was even a classification, the blacks, the colored, and, and then, the white. And then some people, you know, you have, to, you have to hope that you'll be born light-skinned. If you're born light-skinned, you go to the race office and go and apply and say, ah, my skin is fairer than my father's skin. Can I now move to the state state color places? So you can at least you don't stay in different life. places. They stay in different um, sections. Yeah. So when so I watch the... Child, they come and take the child. Yes, they come and take... And there were some children that actually hit, hit their parents. Like, it was a crime for a black person and a white person to procreate. So when, when maybe you're born and you're born in mixed race, which means that you're a colored person, you get offended at your white mother. You're not finding a white man to procreate with. And now you're not a colored person. You've not stepped down the ladder. It's crazy. I'm so happy they finally moved on from that. A debate this morning. I have a lady that's going to be discussing something. Uh, we did a lot of research, a lot of conversation <laughs> with a lot of men. <laughs> when it comes to this conversation. So today we're talking about the high rise of sports betting, especially in Nigeria as a country. And I'm going to be trained on questions around the house. Before the end, just let you know some few things. Now this, of course, is a Monday morning. And while a lot of Nigerians are at work or trying to get to work or trying to start off the day's activities, thousands of young Nigerians are scattered over the different betting stations located in different parts of the country. Now statistics have shown that Nigerians spend about 5 billion naira, which is roughly about $25 million on sports betting. And a research that was carried out in 2014 showed that over 30% of the the nation's population are fully involved in sports betting. Now, this has made us question this. Is sports betting a blessing in Nigeria or a curse? Ladies, shall we go in? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I like to say that um, because of the state of the economy, people always resort to an easier way to make money. Mm -hmm. So if, they, if I feel like if I bet 100 naira, then I can get 1,000 naira. Why not take the risk? See, see, it's not even 1,000 naira. <laughs> I'm just giving an example. <laughs> I spent 100 naira and I get 1,000. Why not take the risk? I beg, it's worth it because the situation in the economy is bad. So I think many people are taking to betting and just saying, let's see where this leads so that I can, you know, make my next delivery. You know, when we, we, we started talking about this conversation, I felt personally attacked. Why? Okay. Because I've been fine searching for a person that will teach me how to bet this thing. <laughs> 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 This man bet 100 naira, he got 15 million. Yeah. I'm like, I want 15 million. <laughs> Neki. Everybody wants 15 million. Everybody wants 15 million in the quickest way they can. Now, mm. the thing about betting is that it runs on the theory of probability. So that is why you see that example you gave one person bet. Uh, we hundred naira, naira, naira and guess in fifty naira. million naira. It's just a theory of probability playing out there. Now, the, an average Nigerian bets three thousand naira a day, mm -hmm. and we have over. I'm an average Nigerian. Do you? I want to argue. Don't I want to argue. <laughs> Bet for 3, naira. I don't bet. I've never even <laughs> thought about betting. I've, I've never, I've yeah. never, it has never crossed my mind. No, Idro would that. bet. Okay, you two, you bet. John, will you bet? No. Have you tried? No, no. It's never crossed your mind. No. Okay, this, this conversation had me, you know, checking out the difference between gambling and betting because I was definitely sure mm. that, you know, betting was gambling. And uh, the, the only dichotomy that was placed was that gambling is heavily dependent on probability and guesswork and luck. You never really know the outcome. But betting, sports betting in particular, is a lot more dependent on experience and skills. You look yeah. at the team, you look at their history, you look at how many games they've won, how many games they've lost, and then you bet using those statistics whether or not you know that you know they're going to 
work, work on that. Now, um, research has shown that the Nigerian economy, even though it has continued to dwindle and reduce, the sports betting business keeps rising and rising and rising. One of them claimed that the companies make as much as $25 million every month, and the money they spend in settling their debts and paying their staff is just around $7 million. I'm, I'm not saying that I want to be Aki Alabi. But I'm saying that this one is really, really, really nice. It's a nice sauce. It's, it's because of the, you know, it's little. Mm -hmm. As little as it sounds. Just imagine, okay, it's four of us we're on set and we're betting 100 naira every day. Now you do 100 naira times seven in a week. Then you do that in a month. That's then you do that in six That's months. Bad. So imagine a number of people in the studio doing that every day. Well, in their defense, one day you still pick and then you cover the money that okay. you've been spending. Yeah, but that's where the addiction begins to come. Joanne, you're going to say something. I know of someone when I was in school, the person who eats a day, but eventually, or he, like, it's money for bed, Niger. It's already ready. Like, that is so, so a bad. Man. Yes, so, so bad. <laughs> <laughs> It's just so bad I have to say, okay, come on, Sam, this money, give it to me then. At the end of the semester, come back for me because I, I never give it to you. Yes, I will have that TAJ. I will have that money. Will you, 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 Risk. Yeah. You is it? Yes. yes. It's, it's a risk. risk. It's a risk, my sister. <laughs> you can buy from this and don't change Fifty times, and you know that that like relates to something, and you mm -hmm. could have actually used it to do something else. Like what? Yeah, we'll that, oh, you don't have to do. Tell me, thing you used to do in our Nigeria economy. We are doing it. We are doing it. Susu, 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 you can actually say it and then your your okay, let's say you save five hundred. Your sister bring that three million for hundred naira. But at least your money is safe <laughs> See, and you're holding it. Okay, but the, the risk about it is many people have complained that mm -hmm. they have lost money and they will not advise people to do bet to actually go and bet their money mm -hmm. without actually understanding the risk of doing it. Mm -hmm. And many times what happens is many people just say, I beg, it's try my luck and win. Mm -hmm. And that's how they keep trying their luck, trying their luck, and then they keep losing. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things that many of them don't accept is that this is risky. Something may go wrong. It's, a, it's like gambling. Gambling where you don't even know where you stand. You don't even well, know. Yeah. Don't even well, I, 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 do, I do believe in the joke society. I've been laughing at most of this conversation. But first of all, on like gambling, like I've already said before, you need experience and skill to okay. do sports betting. So if you're constantly losing, maybe you're just not good at it and you should stop. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that that, that is just that, that is just long. Most, most people do not would they not want to stop. They usually lose. They usually use the statistics of the club. You look at Leicester City. Okay, they've won last five matches. The odds are very high that they are going to win the next match. You can you can you can bet for Leicester City. And I've seen a lot of people that the reason why they usually lose is greed. You use hundred naira or two hundred naira and you bet seventeen matches, and you bet straight win for all of them. And then only one team loses, and that team will cost your tickets. Why are you betting 17, 25 matches? I mean, you can just do five and save yourself the stress. But it's the, it's the, whole, it's the I, hunger and the. I have already told you find that there are different things you could bet tonight. I, because when I was in university, there was a viewing center in my hostel. So I was front and center. We had our own betting office there too. So I was really front and center in these things. And I found out you could bet for different things. There's a guy that used to bet for corner. We just bet that this game will have seven corners. Seven corners. Corner. And what's seven corners? That's corner. for free kicks. <laughs> that's for, oh my god. And that's for gold. I in like this. Oh, I think uh, I don't show that night. So, I mean, there are different, there, there are different stakes that are in it. And I feel like if you decide <laughs> to study it, or you can find a person that is good at it. Most most times, people that work at those offices are actually really good at it because they've had so much experience. And you can make them bet for you. Because I feel like there's so many blessings in betting that we don't look at. First of all, there's the problem of unemployment. Many people are unemployed. We are at work right now. A lot of guys are at one Mary Bet, Bet Ninja, and Clinic in office, trying to make sure that 100 naira is going to bring you 300k. I mean, is it feasible? No. But they could be picking pockets at this time. They could be robbing. I don't think. I don't I think. In, 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 I'm, 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 I'm like, going to counter I that. I don't think that is going to solve an unemployment problem. I, think, if, I, I don't think so. I know. I don't. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. And the only people, the only people that are solving unemployment. Did you know? It, it wants to the only 
people that are actually okay. The, the agents, you could say the agents are working, not the people betting. No, not the people betting because depression is real. Depression is real, man. And I saw the guy hold on, job. hold on. Let's yes, say, let say something. Two weeks. <laughs> depression is real. There's actually what they call gambling disorder. So it's not about solving the employment. So there's a line between disorder and just. Money. There's actually a gambling no. disorder. No, there is. Saying everybody that bets has a gambling no, disorder. No, I'm not no. saying that. I'm no, saying that the, the evil can be greater. Exactly. That's what I am saying. There's no evil greater than the, 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 oh, that's that's what you're Funny enough, funny enough, people that get those kind of money, check it out. They don't know what to invest. Invest that money. It's not all it's the money. Yeah. 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 Not yeah. all, but most yeah. of them. Yeah. The money you but most of them, not budget. all of them. Yeah, let's say something here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, bring it, in, bring, it in, bring it in the whole idea that sometimes when people lose, there's the depression problem. Do you know many people have actually ended up killing themselves? Men who have killed themselves, why, whether, whether, they, whether they bet or not. No. But betting has caused has caused a major problem. This food is a gambling side. problem. Now when you talk about depression, mm -hmm. depression is a major problem. And sometimes really? the way the economy has brought it in our face and has you know the way everything is hard. Now many people are taking to betting to see if this can bring mm -hmm. a solution. Mm -hmm. And then this doesn't bring the solution they are expecting. They're like, oh my god, I just bet my last maybe five thousand, mm -hmm. six thousand, and the frustration is just so rampant. And then you say, oh, let me just drink sniper. Okay, first of all, Sniper is getting a bad rep excessively. I feel bad for the company. Hopefully, they're doing some damage control for all the bad news that they've been getting so far. So, even though they wrote clearly on the bottle that it should not be ingested, but moving on. Now, we're saying that unemployment is really, really high, and if they lose, that they're going to want to kill themselves. First of all, I do not believe that you can ascribe depression to one particular problem, but let's just, let us now bring a plain slate, a probability where this polling these betting stations do not exist at all that the thousands of people inv invested in sports betting do not have this outlet at all so that 30 percent of the nigerian population that is primarily betting that whole 30 percent are not doing anything you're seeing that the pressure will be lower I'm not saying depression, yeah. but I'm saying that this has led to certain and so many other things lead to depression. I'm being saying, underemployed leads to impression and depression. Not being employed at all leads to depression. depression. Playing Baba Ijebu can also lead to depression. No, when I'm not. No, I'm saying that. No, this is one of the way. I'm not saying that this is a major cause of why people are depressed. Mm -hmm. There are other ways in which people become depressed, not just from unemployment unemployment is a situation that is ravaging the whole world mm -hmm. not just african countries now because of the way betting or the way gambling has become some countries they have policies that monitor gambling boards or that money monitors uh, companies that govern gambling yes well. uh, because they know that this outlet if not controlled you know it's going to be leading into a much more bigger problem in the mm -hmm. nation yeah. do you understand so it's solving em employment fine but i don't think it is the best tool because for me it's not a stable tool mm -hmm. do you understand there's no stability for there's no sustainability for these outlets to run i'm not sure we'll be having them in the next 10 to 20 years they would change do you understand because of those times that would come and so people should be wise people bet and of course you've heard them say it's fun you know it's this it's that but when i was making my research now betting betting or gambling becomes like an addiction to you scientists related to that substance you take as a drug and when you're not taking it you know your brain is being affected so when you're not betting the money it's looking like what like you feel like something is missing from your body if that's where the addiction starts coming in it, it starts affecting your psyche and you're like what's 100 naira i can't mm -hmm. give what's the risk from 100 naira it goes to 200 naira. and when you when you start winning the money in the little that it comes you feel like you should put in more you should put in more the more the bigger it becomes and then you just see that you start losing focus and so i'm not saying people that win the money if you have a plan and you win the money fine you can infuse your plan into the money you want but there are some people that even if they win 100 million naira today they would not use that money to do Anything. one thing okay there are people that go to work every day at the end of the uh, at the end of the month they earn about one million naira and they still don't use it to do anything i, I feel like we're always we're always convinced that if you do not suffer 
No, it's not a suffering done, thing. That if you do not it's suffer not for something, thing. you cannot appreciate it. I do not. I do not believe in that. That is why Nigerians are always so angry at people that have privilege. When they see a rich man's child, they are offended because they are convinced that the child did not suffer for that thing, and that is why it's not valuable. And that is the mindset they are bringing into sports betting. You're saying that the bulk of them are not going to spend the money. Well. No, it that's not what I'm, I'm saying. saying. Their time and their sweat, so they do not know something. what they're going to do with the money. You cannot tell a person what they're going to do with the money that they have earned. It is the money that you earn. It takes time to gather the skill. It takes time to know which team is going to do. These are things that take skill. It is a skill. And if I decide to earn five million naira from that skill, I owe it to myself to do whatever I want to do with the money. What you cannot I decide to be you? angry with me because I decide to waste the money. Yeah. And addiction is a problem because addiction is a problem. Problem. There's gambling addiction, there's drug addiction, there's sex addiction, there's reading addiction, there's addiction in every decade kind of thing. There's nothing that you can do right now that you cannot be addicted in. So I don't think that we can knock down the entire practice because there is a We're probability. Down the entire practice. Because there's a probability that a person can get addicted to it. Let me just read some comments by the way. Um, Nosayaba Sayende says more grace. Good morning, Nosayaba. Morning, Thank Nosa. you so much. Uh, Dominion Okeke says good morning, ladies. Uh, Marking Day says good morning, ladies. And uh, Dominion Okeke returns because I sitting like us. He goes on and says suicide is inevitable when talking about betting because if you cut, if because it cuts according to the language used, some people kill themselves. They put a whole lot into it. But for me, research have found that betting has reduced criminalism in the country. So instead of a whole lot of harm because in society. Let those people take their time betting. In fact, they can sleep in those shops. <laughs> <laughs> Let the government create bed and bonds there. It will help a whole lot. Don't quote me. I can't even quote you. I can't say that right. <laughs> John, I don't know this sort of thing. You said that we're saying um, it's Okay, let me come in here. How sure are we that this betting um, sites when you eventually going to pay you back your money? Most times they have paid, no, they've been there um, for years. Sometime last year or last two years, so when Bet Nigeria, I think during the SMAS period, when people it's folded up, those who won, you're not mm -hmm. giving back their money. And they came online to start. Which company was that? Bet Nigeria. You sure it was Bet Nigeria? Yeah. Okay. And they came online to uh, um, to query the company. So I feel people should not put trust in this um betting site because you you don't know when they are going to fold up. If you keep spending your other money, I sure you are going to eventually get the money when you win. In a country where it is legalized, first of all, all these kind all these companies are registered. It's just like your bank. How are you sure you get your money back? Because the bank is registered with the SEC. They are governing bodies that govern their operations. They cannot just decide that they're not going to pay you. And if you look at other bigger gambling practices, we've seen movies, we've seen shows, we've seen stories where they'll say that you went to the casino and then you were winning so much that the owner of the casino had to come and arrest you. It's still a business. They do not want you to win. They want you to lose. They need the money to do things. The more you lose, the more money they, they earn. It's, it, it, it is a gamble, my love. What I'm saying about sports betting is that we cannot pretend that it is not helping in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And you cannot destroy. It's like saying that cars can kill people, so let's make cars illegal. Cars are still very useful. We still need cars to drive. But the thing is, the thing is, the advantages we can we can the disadvantages is way more than the advantages for me because the truth is, if you want to put ten people in this room and tell them to talk about the benefits of betting all their life, I bet you eight out of those ten will tell you that they've been ruined via betting. And so, if you want to bet, good for you. And if you don't want to be ruined, don't do that. If it's a choice thing, many people don't know where to draw the line so on anything on is, anything their, and so in betting so on betting many people don't know where to draw the line in, in, that is why the truth is i would state even if you get 10 million euro from betting today most people from betting do not maximize that money because of the source of which it comes so there's something that comes from a money you earn that's the truth. There's, there's, there's this thing that comes. We are sitting here and we're earning our money. There's how we know we want to maximize our salary. You want to take your salary and go and bet. But when you're not sure of the output. So it's really something you're not sure of. It, it, it gets to affect your psyche, give or take. And so 
fine i know economically it has helped employ people we have vendors that get commission you know from these betting agencies and it has helped them you know suit their abuse and all of that but what of people that become victim as a result of you know this procedure and people that begin to fall out of track and the governing bodies of the gambling yeah. do not put them in check yeah. and make them know you talked about sscs that monitor banks we are aware of sscs you know monitoring banks we know if a bank is about to fold up about to merge the public is aware but what about gambling outfits that so we are not aware where the public do not have so information on how they are not banks that have disappeared without people being this shocked. Is, we are aware of them. In Nigeria, See, it, is, it has become much should more we, modified. Should we go back to history? No, yeah. it has become Several more modified. Time, time will not make us when nobody knew discussion. where they went to. We're going to continue this after after this conversation. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We had a lot of fun. Uh, clearly, we know everywhere stands. Joanne says, "Don't use your school fees as a cost." Nikki said, "Please burn them down." And I he said, "Burn them down." <laughs> down. I'm not encouraging the vetting because people get addicted. I don't like encourage addiction. People get Just addicted to anything. To people life. get addicted to anything. I am not against it. I am not particularly in support of it. I am saying do what you like to do. And I'm saying that we cannot pretend that because a thing has a bad side, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have good sides. And on this juncture, we're going to end the show. It's been exciting. I love my gosh. You guys are always so passionate. We're going to be here again tomorrow by 9 a.m. having a huge conversation about something just as important. My name is Joyce Jukes. And I'm Adriel Omoyegede. And of course, I'm Nikki Moyo. And I'm John Have yourself a lovely day and good morning. Good morning.